Hello, and welcome to LunchBots by BirdBrain Technologies. LunchBots is a web series dedicated to teachers who are using robotics in their classrooms and to teachers who are planning to use robotics in their classrooms. My name is Matt. I'm the technology coach for BirdBrain Technologies, and I'm here to share some practical tips and tools that will help you bring robotics to your students. We're going to begin this episode the way we begin all episodes, and that's with a brief video. This video will function as a conversation starter. Today's conversation is all about wireless control using your tablet or your smartphone. This is the Hummingbird BLE, or Bluetooth adapter. There are two versions out there, version 1.0 and version 2.0. While I'll be using version 2.0 today, both adapters function in exactly the same way, and everything I'll be discussing during this episode is relevant to both. The adapter snaps onto the bottom of the hummingbird, like this. The adapter allows the hummingbird to connect to your tablet or your smartphone through the Bird Blocks app. Bird Blocks is very similar to Scratch or Snap. If you're already familiar with block-based programming, you'll find Bird Blocks very intuitive. Any project we've discussed so far in LunchBots, and pretty much any project we're going to discuss in the future, can be operated wirelessly using Bird Blocks and the Bluetooth adapter. There are some differences. For instance, since Bird Blocks is tablet-based, you don't have access to the keyboard. This means that events like when space key pressed which exists in Scratch and Snap, will not exist in Bird Blocks. While you do give up keyboard functionality, you gain access to your device's built-in accelerometer. This means that you can control your robot by tilting your device from side to side. But perhaps the most impressive feature of the Bluetooth adapter is the fact that it can be controlled using a smartphone. Imagine it. Programming, robotics, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, design, all controlled with the technology that many of your students already have in their pockets. Here is a rover. I think this is a really elegant design from Dr. Bambi Brewer, BirdBrain's curriculum designer and resident maker. This design is available on our website at hummingbirdkit.com. I love this rover. It can be assembled pretty quickly, and once built, it can be modified to accommodate a whole range of creative design choices from your students. Try adding a light sensor and an LED to the bottom to make it a line-following robot. Or how about this? Have your class make miniature parade floats. More on this project in our next episode, Scratch to Arduino Pathways. As an educator, I'm always searching for new ways to allow young people to engage with robotics, and really technology in general, in a non-competitive environment. I feel that the wireless feature holds a lot of potential for educators looking to bring presentation and performance into their classroom by using these wireless robots as puppets. Now we've explored animatronics with projects like the Robot Petting Zoo. An animatronic creature is entirely pre-programmed. Its movements are decided ahead of time. A puppet show offers a bit more room for performance, improvisation, and spontaneity. I'm going to share three robot puppet designs. These designs are in their very early stages, but I hope that they'll provide you and your students with a jumping off point for classroom puppetry. Here's the first design. This puppet will require at least two people to manipulate it. One person to control the movement of the body, and one person to control the movement of the face. This is the most simple of the puppets featured today. Two servos to control the eyes, and two servos to control the eyebrows. This puppet goes together pretty quickly, and like the rover, once built, there's a huge space for students to manipulate not just the puppet design, but the puppet program as well. This is puppet design number two. This puppet is a little bit more complicated, but it does feature one of the mechanisms we looked at in the last episode, the winch. It also uses magnets in the design. I like these little earth magnets, but they can be quite expensive, so I wouldn't recommend them for every classroom. But they can be fun. 
I got to playing around with some earlier this week. I do tend to favor designs that don't require much hot glue. The eye and mouth systems are held into the robot using these Velcro tabs. So here's an interesting design. This one's more of a mask than a puppet, but it does incorporate performance. This puppet is controlled by my phone. My phone's taped to the top of the head so that when I tilt my head, the eyes move. The mouth is controlled by the sound sensor so that when I talk, the mouth moves. Now seems like a good time to introduce a new term. Automatonophobia is the fear of ventriloquist dummies, animatronic creatures, wax statues, or anything that represents a being that appears to have feeling or perception. It just seemed relevant. Currently, the performer in this mask is working blind. If you choose to explore this design, I would recommend asking your students to solve this problem and create a mask that allows the performer to see. There are some very detailed instructions on our website, hummingbirdkit.com, for setting up your hummingbird for Bluetooth control and installing bird blocks. I'll include a link to that page in the description section of this video. For those of you watching live, hang tight. We're going to begin our conversation right after this video. For those of you watching this as an archived video, we can continue our conversation on Twitter, that's at birdbraintech hashtag lunchbots, or in the comment section of this video. I'll see you in two weeks when we'll be talking about the benefits of using your hummingbird with the Arduino programming language. I'll see you next time.